Okay. All right, we are live. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning to my TikTok family, Instagram family, my YouTube family, and my Facebook family. Oh, got to mute that, huh? All right, so as you guys see, this is what you should see if you are watching me on YouTube. See that back there? That's what you should be seeing, okay? If you are watching me on Facebook, we appreciate you. However, shimmy on over to Facebook and let's watch this on Facebook. Same thing with Instagram. If you are watching us on Instagram, we are grateful. Thank you. But shimmy on over to YouTube and watch us on YouTube. TikTok family, good morning. Good morning. Y'all know it is Money Monday. And for the month of March, I am highlighting women entrepreneurs Yes, in a series where we are going to inspire and motivate and encourage other female women business owners, women in business. Listen, I want to be politically correct. This series is titled Woman to Woman. And no, you are not Barbara and I am not Shirley. We are here to share information on what business looks like, how to balance business and family, and just to give some words of knowledge. I've got two incredible ladies here with me today that are in the money-making, wealth-building business. And y'all know Money Mondays is, is for the money, honey, for me. So I have been blessed to have these two ladies join my panel series, TED Talk. Listen, whatever you want to call it, you call it that, okay? But we are going to give everybody a moment to come in and to see the live. When you guys come in on TikTok, share the live out for me. Leave a comment so I know you're watching. I hope that I have the engagement that these two women deserve. Um, TikTok has been playing with my viewership. TikTok has been playing with my numbers. And we all know that TikTok is one of those platforms where you can be following everything that they want you to follow and they still going to make their own rules, which is why if you are watching on TikTok, I want you to also make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm going to make sure that you can find these two ladies. I've got their contact information that I'm about to share. But if you are watching on TikTok, please remember that TikTok slick be a hater when it comes to colored creators. Let's let's not cause a ruckus this morning, but let's just be honest, okay? And with the information that these two ladies are going to share today, I don't want anybody to miss it. After we stream live, I will try my level best. I have not been holding myself accountable to getting these episodes out the way that I should, and I ask for your grace um, and a little bit of patience and forgiveness because, listen, life be life. And However, I am going to do my level best today to get last week's episode and these two. I'm going to split their episode in half. So these um, ladies stream, their series will be available next with, I'm hoping, today. YouTube sometimes makes me wait to download their episode. So if I don't get it up today, it will most definitely be up as soon as they allow me to download it. Okay. So let's hop right in. TikTok family, thank you for coming in. Share the live, leave a comment so I know that you're watching. Um, and if you have an additional device, go watch us on YouTube to support the channel. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, as you guys come in, leave a comment so I know you're here. But I am going to hop right in. Up, oh, hold on. TikTok, don't worry about that. Y'all know I am managing multiple screens on this good software today, honey. Listen, I'm going to build it as I fly. We're going to figure it out as we go. Right, right. Let me get a sip of Joe. Hold on. Who is Joe and why do we call Coffee Joe? Does anybody have an answer? I, I still ain't figured out who Joe is and why I'm sipping him this morning. But either way it go, I need him, okay? So let's hop right in. The first lady that I'm going to introduce is Ira Watson. Ira Watson is originally from Kansas City, Missouri, but she is now residing in August, uh, Augusta, Georgia. She is married to a military husband, which we appreciate your service, sir. And she is the mom of three wonderful children. She has a degree in drafting and designing, a certificate in 
office administration and is licensed for insurance. She is currently studying for the SIE state exam so that she can become a licensed can become licensed in investments with her team, the Legacy Wealth Builders. I love that name because I know I'm here for it. Um, with her team, she educates families on how to earn more income, become properly protected, debt-free, and financially independent. And today she is doing a dual um series or episode with her business partner Whitney Moyes. I hope I said your name right. Okay, great. So Ira and Whitney work on the same team, the Legacy Wealth Builders. Whitney is a mom of four of a with a blended family and she is engaged. Whitney made a transition into the financial sector and away from her 10 year long career as a certified athletic trainer during the pandemic and while pregnant. When I talk about a woman getting it done, that's a woman getting it done. She is licensed in life and annuity. She is a licensed life and annuity agent and is in the process of taking her series six, then her series 63 in order to be a securities investment licensed agent. Her team and her help families also, again, earn income, become properly protected, debt-free and financially independent. So I want y'all to welcome Ira and Whitney, let me get my panel so everybody got their space, everybody got their due. And I'm going to unmute your mic, Whitney. Good morning, Whitney. Unmuting Ira. Good morning, Ira. Hey, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Thank you so much for having us. This is really an awesome opportunity. And I'm, I'm happy I could be here to be on the panel today. I am too. Good morning. Thank you for that. Good morning, Miss Whitney. I'll let you greet everybody. Good morning, everyone. Thank you again, Ashley, for having us on. I'm excited. I've been excited to jump in today. I cannot wait to get down to the nitty gritty, um, answer the questions and just, you know, share like the, you know, greatness of what we do and connect with other women that are doing great things too, just like yourself. Awesome. And I love it. Woman to woman. I'm not Barbie and y'all are not Shirley. We mm. are here to encourage each other. We are here to be a positive influence and we are here to definitely build a village of support around other like-minded women. So I am grateful for you guys taking the time out of your day to even join so we can share some information and knowledge. So I gave everybody brief backgrounds of who you ladies are, where you're coming from and what you do. But I am going to ask five questions, y'all know. And if you want to go into depth a little bit more, you are more than welcome to. Um, so Whitney, let's start with you. Tell us about your business. What is your chosen industry slash business and why did you choose this industry? Absolutely. So like Ashley said, I'm Whitney Moise and we are in the business of pretty much helping people with all things money. All right. So we're in the financial industry. And as we said before, our mission is all these four things are important is to help people earn more income, become properly protected, debt free and financially independent. So ideally building legacies, building safety, um, so as far as why I got into the industry, you heard about like my background, um, just kind of life started lifing and, um, <laughs> and I was in the sports medicine athletic training field and I absolutely loved it. But I did, um, I went through school as a single mom and I went through my career as a single mom and athletic training is a burnout career as is. And then you mm -hmm. topple being a single mom on top of it and things like that, having a child it just makes it even a little bit more extreme. So uh, athletic training brought me to Texas. Uh, the pandemic changed my life, just like most people did. I've always been working since I was 12 years old. I've been a hard worker, but I always worked for other people and made their businesses successful. And so when the opportunity came for me to even do this on a part-time basis, working from home during the pandemic um, with my, you know, my infant, I said, you know what, let me explore this. I had been wanting to get out of my field because now I had four kids and I was absolutely going to burn out. And so I explored this, but then I ended up absolutely falling in love with it and transitioning to being a full-time career where I'll be opening up an office here 
in Austin locally by the end of this year, but we're still expanding and Zoom has done everything for us to do stuff nationwide. So mm -hmm. I fell in love with the aspect of helping people. I've always liked that, especially coming from medicine, um, but I was able to help people and now be present in my family's life as well. Mm, and that is amazing to be able to have that work-life balance so we don't miss some of those important moments. So Whitney, that is a great backstory and thank you for sharing. So Ira, we're going to ask you the same question as well. Tell us about your business. What is your chosen industry slash business and why did you choose said industry? Okay, absolutely. So um, I do work with Whitney. Um, we are in the financial service industry. And like she was saying, we help <clears throat> families with all things money. So I, I, I started to grow a passion when it comes to helping families, when it comes to reaching retirement goals, uh, setting up uh, for um, not 401ks. I'm in the I'm in the process of doing that. But um, 529 college funds for these kids mm -hmm. out here becoming properly protected with income protection uh, guidance on mortgages. I will be working on that mortgage license pretty soon here to, to help families mm -hmm. get uh, better rights when it comes to their mortgage, mortgages. Uh, senior health care, uh, people that's 65 and older, they need that health care. We definitely guide them with that there. And also wills and trust. They're very, very important these days. So that's why I jumped into this because I've, I've seen the value in everything that we help families with. I mean, 10 out of 10 people need these things uh chat don't y'all agree 10 out of 10, 10, 10 people out of 10. Need yes, exactly needs what we do here 100 percent, 100 percent. so uh why did i start this um uh, almost two years ago whitney um she sat down with my husband and i also uh chris well we all sat down together and i seen that we need exactly what they was bringing to the table so the fact that i seen the value in it I said, I will, I would love to help people as well when it comes to the guidance, you know, financially, because I didn't have that guidance growing up. So I was uh, also like 37 weeks pregnant. It was around a 37 week <laughs> being what? pregnant where I started and I went on ahead and I did that state exam, which is totally scary because I hate flunking tests, but I went on ahead <laughs> and I passed it. I ended up getting appointed. And I, I was in there. I, I became a uh, license and, and life and annuities. So it was absolutely a blessing that I could do this and be at home with my kids. And I've just grown a passion for it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So something that all three of us shared, ladies, is that I love to help. You all love to help. Mm -hmm. I'm a definite advocate i'm a definitely an advocate in each one teach one how do we know unless we share this information with others so they know what options that they have and oftentimes especially when you talk about financial um aspects of things we were never taught our mm -hmm. grandparents weren't taught our parents weren't taught that it was what go to college get a job make good money work yeah. that's it exactly and there's there is so much more and I am definitely not licensed like these ladies are. These are the subject matter experts. Mm -hmm. I share information based on my personal experience. That's why I was so excited to be able to connect with two ladies that this is what they do. So I can only give you information as far as I know, but what do I always tell y'all? I will always search out a resource that can take you even further because once you have the knowledge and the information, your capabilities and possibilities are endless. So thank Absolutely. you so much again. Um, I think this is, like I were said, 10 out of 10 people need it. Yes. <laughs> whether it's a will, whether it's insurance, where it's just that 529 to prepare for your child's educational future, it doesn't matter. You need something to prepare your financial future for sure. So I agree with that wholeheartedly. I just want to okay, say also, Ashley, yeah. um, real quick, when it comes to, you know, if, if we keep living, we're going to reach retirement. And a lot of people don't think about like, oh, how can I make that 401k grow? You know, how can I make sure I have that money in retirement where I can live comfortably? Because if, mm -hmm. you, if you keep living, you're going to reach that. So yeah, that's why I, I love to help people reach reach those goals. Because we, like right. I said, we all need it. Right. You all, we all need it. Absolutely. Agreed. Yeah. And actually, you did say like everybody was taught how to get a paycheck. 
but no one was taught what to do with that paycheck other than right. pay for bills and kind of mm -hmm. spend it unnecessarily sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's important that the, I mean, people that, you know, look like us, brown, black community, things like that, we absolutely weren't educated. So having yes. the conversations, having people like yourself being able to speak on personal experiences is crucial too, because people mm -hmm. are more inclined to go seek out those sources if they have people they can relate to um, that have mm -hmm. done the same. I agree. A thousand percent. And I, listen, this is I knew that when I brought these ladies on that this was not going to be a typical bam, bam, bam. All right. Have a good day, because it is it is a literally a wealth of knowledge. And this is a, a topic that I'm very passionate about because people have to understand a lot of what happens in our economy is by design. The lack of knowledge being shared in our community is mm -hmm. by design. Mm -hmm. They need to keep certain people in the labor force as long as they can. And the moment that we start creating our own wealth, why am I still in the labor force? Y'all mm -hmm. get, y'all get, y'all yep. see what, what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. We ain't got, we ain't got to go too deep because we want to make sure that this is pushed into the algorithm, but. If you know, you know, and I want you guys to understand that the fear of, well, I don't trust any, anybody with our money. I don't trust the banks. Insurance is a scam. I want y'all to think why that's been pushed into our mind. The reality is mm -hmm. the Rockefellers and the Vanderbilts, they built their wealth with insurance. That's a whole nother conversation. Absolutely. They started <laughs> building their wealth with life insurance. Death is inevitable, right? So why would you not prepare your family's generational wealth upon your demise, right? Okay. Yeah, exactly. so I ain't going to go too deep because we'll be on here all day because this is, this is right up my We can alley. go deep. Right up my <laughs> okay. So Whitney, I'm going to go to your question number two. Mm -hmm. As an entrepreneur, what challenges or obstacles have you encountered that you know are specific to being a woman and how did you overcome those obstacles? Absolutely. So, and especially in our field, in the financial industry, um, again, we want to push the algorithm right now. So we have things moving, but most people that look like us, you know, most of those people that take care of that field, um, they don't look like us and it's our opposite gender. Right. Um, so mm -hmm. that's kind of been the, I would say the difficult aspect of things is women aren't exactly always perceived or given as much respect as a professional in this field mm -hmm. as our counterparts are, right? So that's kind of been, you know, you have conversations, people kind of get pushed back because of the image, because we're women, obviously, and they're apprehensive to talk about their finances, they're apprehensive to, you know, move forward and things like that. Now, I would say that if you have partners, it's always good to have the conversation together with the person that's making your financial decisions. OK, because the wives tend to, you know, kind of ease that that tension there. But then we know that just depending on the dynamics of relationships, the husbands tend to obviously still have a say in moving forward. So that has been difficult. But I've like personally, I've just I've prayed through it. I do affirmations. I continue to remind mm -hmm. myself that. There is value in what we do. Everyone needs what we do. So whether I'm a woman or not, I have the cookie. OK, like right. I, I have the cookie and I'm confident that I can help anyone when, like when it comes down to it. So at the very least, people are going to walk away with value that can change their future, whether they move forward with me or not. I know what I'm presenting is necessary. Mm, that's good. And the honest truth is. If people are already apprehensive about making those financial decisions because of fear of the lack of information, then to then have to go home and convince your partner as well and to say, well, Whitney told a woman. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, well, I'm not. So right. <laughs> I, I am I am glad that you understand that even with a no, you're still adding value and it may take them a couple of weeks, a couple of months, a year for them to really sleep on the information, but one day it'll click. And I hope that they come back to complete that, you know, plan with you. So that's good. Thank you for sharing. Absolutely. So Ira, we're going to ask you the same 
question. As an entrepreneur, what challenges or obstacles have you encountered that you know are specific to being a woman and how did you overcome those obstacles? Yeah, yeah. So um, I am in the business with Whitney and I felt she's my business partner, but I'm a part of her burgers that we're growing, <laughs> growing here. <laughs> yeah, so, but I have uh, faced some obstacles, you know, being a woman in this business. My biggest obstacle is being confident. You know, um, as a financial coach, like Whitney was saying, like they typ typically they don't look like us when you think about, you know, a financial yeah. coach. So sometimes I need that that push or that encouragement from my team. You know, it, that could be Whitney. That could be some of the very successful, uh, uh, educated men on our team that will say, you got this, you know, you got it, Ira. Like Whitney said, we have the cookie. Everybody needs what we do. So be confident. You know, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. You can't. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I've overcome it. Just keep those in mind. Positive affirmations, like Whitney was saying, you know, I just say those kind of things to myself to make sure I, I have that confidence and building that confidence. Awesome. Agreed. Um, positive. I love that you both said positive affirmations. If we don't believe in ourselves, nobody else will. How you present yourself, the level of confidence that you have when you share information. If you don't believe it, the person that you're trying to share that information with will not believe it. And affirming yourself is so important. And it does nothing but help when we have other educated men and women that are a part of our village supporting us from behind so that we can move forward on our own. I believe in empowerment and um, giving people the authority to be mm -hmm. able to make those moves instead of, well, you can do it with me. No, to have people that encourage you to go do it on your own because you have it, you got it. That's powerful. That is truly powerful. Absolutely. All right, ladies, thank you so much for that. Question number three, let's go back to Miss Whitney. Do you feel that being a business owner, and I think I know the answer to this, mm -hmm. do you think that being a business owner has allowed more space for you to embrace your womanhood and your motherhood? Yes, absolutely. Um, my reason for getting transitioning careers, although it was scary, it still can be scary, right, um, is was primarily for my family and for my kids, you know, so um, as like, as I said before, I was a single mother, I was in college working two jobs full time. Um, and I was just me, and my daughter. So I didn't get don't get me wrong, me and her are very close. Sorry, I got my speaking of little daughter. Um, me it's and her okay. are very close, but we end up. Oh my gosh! Hold yeah. on, pause for a second. <laughs> you are so adorable. Can you say hi? I love your ponies. <laughs> I love your puffs. Say thank you. Okay, now we're back focused. <laughs> yep, yep. Here you go, Liz. Yes, and your pony and the and the it, pony. Oh, thank I you, love Liz. it. It's pretty. You're welcome. Bye bye. <laughs> So, you know, that's the great thing. This is reality, though. You know, we work with a lot reality. of family. So um, most of the time, you know, we try to keep them tamed, right? You know, children can, can you know, be themselves. It's okay. Yeah. But, I had to bribe um, mine with Pop-Tarts this morning. That's the only reason you don't see him. He's got a Pop-Tart and an iPad. But otherwise, yeah. he would be right here. And that's just, that's mommyhood. That's it. Yep. We love it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, but what was I saying? I was saying as far as it's giving me the space to be present, to be home. Um, my older kids, I have two teenage daughters, that youngest one, and then we have a son who's eight. So they do a lot of activities and, and things like that. And I'm very glad of um, what I accomplished as a single mother, you know, and my daughter and I are very close. But um, I'm just thankful that I still have time during her childhood to be more present and as I'm, you know, raising the, the, the other children as well. So it's just, it's given me the space to have a flexible schedule, not have to worry about, you know, if my children get sick, well, I can't take them to the doctor because I have a nine to five, not saying there's anything wrong with that, but that was a, a huge thing for me to want to transition into being an entrepreneur and uh, just controlling that time, you know, work-life balance, like you mentioned before, Ashley. Mm-hmm. I share that a thousand percent. I'll let Ira give her 
um, answer before I comment. So Ira, same question to you. Do you feel that being a business owner has allowed more space for you to embrace your womanhood and your motherhood? Absolutely. Um, I didn't grow up the most feminine. Uh, I play basketball, stuff like that. So it definitely made me uh, tap into that, that womanhood more, you know, more, more than often. Uh, just being softer, being understanding when it comes to talk, talking to certain people, uh, that confidence, like I was just saying before, I definitely have tapped more into that when it comes to being, you know, into that, that womanhood side. And also, like, uh, with, I have a little one here as well. Sorry if y'all hear me. <laughs> but, um, it's okay. The motherhood. Yeah. So the motherhood aspect of it, yes, I'm, I'm able to stay at home, make my own schedule. Um and be here to educate my kids at the same time. We don't have to send them off to daycares where you don't know if they're mistreating your kids or not. You know, I hear horror stories about those kind of things. Um, and yeah, just learning and growing as a woman and as a mother, this this business has helped me greatly. Just hearing different stories. And I know that it's crazy, like how does that tie together? But believe me, it does when you talk to certain people and you, you hear their stories, it helps a lot. You know, and it, it's helped me. Hush, it's helped me a lot when it comes to womanhood and 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 motherhood. It's, the flexibility is great. Yeah. So I would like to. I'm, I don't want to take over the ladies' um, episode because this is about them today. Y'all hear my stories all the time, but I would love to share that I knew at 16 years old that I wanted to be self-employed. I watched my mom one day, as incredible as she was, sit at the kitchen table and stress behind taking me and my brother to the doctor or going to work and keeping her job and making sure that her paycheck was what she needed it to be next week. Yeah. And I remember even as a 16 year old child feeling a sense of guilt, like I'm the one making my mom miss work because she shouldn't have to miss work. Well, guess what? We have children. We brought these babies into the world by choice in most cases. And we want to give them our full attention. And I just am a firm believer that a mother should never have to choose between being a mother mm -hmm. and going to work. Yeah. To hear some of the stories of, well, my my employer told me that I can't take my kids to the doctor. She needs me at work. It's horrible. That's horrible. We should never have to pick. And so- mm -hmm. I'm self-employed and I've been self-employed for the last 17 years. I've worked nine to fives here or there when things got a little slow, but I always knew that my priority was my children. And now that I am engaged, my family is my priority. You only get this time one time. They are only going to be this size one time. The mm -hmm. days today, you don't get those days again. And I just my heart hurts for any woman that ever feels like she doesn't have the room or the space to do what she needs to do to be a mother. And then when we talk about womanhood, at the end of the day, we are women first. And I can't do any of the things that I need to do in the other aspects of my life if I don't take care of me first. Right. So be, having the opportunity to have that flexibility, like Whitney and Ira said, to be able to have a moment of respite, to take a deep breath, to pour into my own confidence, to affirm myself, to do some self-care. We don't always get that when we do uh, we operate in nine to fives. Again, like Whitney said, nothing wrong with nine to fives. Y'all got some benefits that I miss. Can somebody give me some PTO, please? Can somebody <laughs> give me a vacation day, a paid vacation day? Please. But when you look at the risk and reward and the benefits and you weigh them out, I wouldn't give this life up for anything in the world because again, like Whitney said, like Ira said, my baby is right in that room. I'm not missing a beat. And that's so important because you can't get that time back. So I'm thank you for sharing. I relate a thousand percent. And I hope I, if there are any other ladies that are listening to this, if you are, if you can relate, leave it in the comment. Tell us that you relate to these stories that we are sharing so that we know that you're listening. We know that we're making an impact. Okay, so let's go to question number four. So Whitney, this is for you to start. How has entrepreneurship impacted your overall life? Goodness, um, 
I know I, I read it before, but I was like, that is a loaded question. Um, it is. It's, <laughs> it's completely changed. I mean, I'm on like uh, different spectrums when it comes to where I was at and mm -hmm. like where I am and where I'm going to, which is always, you know, important. Right. And um, it's just given me the opportunity to change my life personally, being in the, like Ira was saying, learning what we do. Not only did it wasn't something where I was like, oh, I can make money off of that. Right. You know what I mean? I can go help. Right. I was like, I need that. Right. You know what I mean? I was like, right. I need that. I can tell you about 10, 15 other people that I know and people that I don't know that need it too. Mm -hmm. So it changed my business, changed my life, not just because of like, um, you know, the source of income that I have now and my schedule, but it literally changed my, my children's and my great, my great, great children's like generationally because of the choice yes. that I made to come to this business. Right. And to keep my mind open to the value that we're able to bring. So obviously it changed that aspect. Um, I'm no longer like it, it changed the way I manage my time. We will probably talk about that. Um, cause when you have someone telling you where you need to be, it's even sometimes easier to be there than when you need to tell yourself, I need to do these things. So mm -hmm. it's changed. I can't even express the magnitude of what it's changed for me mentally, um, what it's changed for me, like uh, spiritually um, mm -hmm. and, you know, financially as a mother, it's absolutely um transformed my entire life it doesn't look anything like it did before like I, that's that just being transparent yeah absolutely and that is that's truth to change your mindset because you're in a different perspective because now you have control versus when someone else had control yeah a huge difference huge difference so Ira, let's ask you the same question. How has entrepreneurship impacted your overall life? All right. So uh, like I said, like being a business with Whitney, <laughs> um, it's impacted my life. Like, like she was saying, like mindset, mindset wise. Um, I never thought that I could do what I'm doing today helping families and stuff like that. Like I've never, yeah. I never thought about it. Cause like we were saying from the beginning, um, I didn't know about, you know, financial need services. I didn't know anything financial literacy going into this. So how has it changed my life? How has it impacted me? I know what I need to do for these little ones here. Cause eight years ago, I wasn't worried about saving money. I wasn't worried about, right. um, you know, it was like a paycheck paycheck type of lifestyle and mentality that I had going. But I know for a fact that we have to make sure we have things in place for these little ones here. So, I mean, at the end of the day, that's how I feel that this has helped me overall when it comes to um, our business that we're doing here. I got to make better decisions. Uh, people need to make better decisions. And that's another reason why I'm passionate and grown this passion about what we do, because I know if I could change my mindset, my mentality from where I was at, I know other people can, and I know that people miss this. So that's how it's impacted me. <laughs> Absolutely. And I want to just piggyback on what both Whitney and Ira said. Everything we do in life starts with a mindset. Mm -hmm. Until you have the mindset to want to do different, want to know different, you unfortunately, typically, not in all cases, but typically will stay right where you are because your mindset, mindset shift is what makes you want to go out and gather more information. What yeah. It makes you seek out people who know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. It makes you make those sacrifices. These ladies were pregnant in the pandemic in, in Whitney's case and still decided to educate herself to go into a totally different industry than she's ever been. That takes courage. That takes commitment. And without the mindset of saying, I know I need to do better and I know I need more for me and my family, where where would you be without that mindset shift? And the same thing with Ira. And I'm so appreciative of your transparency because the same for me. Without knowing, I don't want to live check to check. 
I know my children need better. They deserve better. What can I do? Your mindset shifted and that's what encouraged you and enabled you to go out, seek the knowledge and apply it in your real life so you can start seeing right. the results that you see. And something that I'll say, these ladies didn't say it, I said it. A lot of times people hear what I say and take it as me being judgmental. Well, not everybody wants the same thing you want, Ashley. Very true. But I don't think any human being that are that's in sound mind and body wants to struggle wants to not have what they need to live. And if we don't make the proper plans and we don't follow good information, what are we going to do as we get older? What are you going to do if you don't prepare for 60, 70 and you're not physically able to work, you know, 50, 60 hours a week, like we can do in our thirties, what are you going to do? So unless you just got a different way of living, you want to be able to feed yourself, clothe yourself, have the insurance so you can get the medical care, have, you know, stable shelter that is adequate for you to live. Correct. Yeah. All of that costs money. And so either you can prepare for it now to where it's not as strenuous to provide for yourself then. Or you can hope for the best. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm not waiting on the government to come and save me because mm -hmm. it ain't. They probably not. <laughs> like yeah. the way it's no okay. telling what's gonna happen in thirty years. No, yeah, exactly. That's all that I'm saying. So I share that to say I never say what I say from a place of judgment. Well, yeah, I'm better than y'all, so because I did this. Not at all. No, it's not nothing all. wrong with I'm, a little bit of guidance, and I, that's how you know people can take things how they want, but be open for you know that good advice and that guidance. You can take it as, That's oh, it. she thinks she knows all that or, you know, she's all that or whatever. Be open-minded. That's just what that's Be about. Open. And what do they say? Eat the meat, spit out the bone. What applies mm -hmm. to you, use mm -hmm. it. What doesn't apply to you, let it go over your head and act like you didn't hear it. But at the end of the day, if any information that I share, I or shares or Whitney shares helps you, Apply that in your real day life. And when you're ready to take it to the next step, contact these ladies directly so they can really help you get into it to really see some, some good results. But it all stay, uh, starts with mindset. I agree with that so wholeheartedly. Um, so our last question, we're well, official question, and then we have a couple of would you rather questions for you ladies. Mm -hmm. So Whitney, I would like to ask you, if you could share three business related tips, what would they be? Okay. So my first tip, oh, we changed views. Did you do that? Okay. I did. <laughs> I was like switching it up for us. All right. So our first tip, um, I would say as a business owner, an entrepreneur, maybe even people that are looking in um, having a second source of income, you know, like you don't, you know, people are like, you, it seems like some people just like think that you have to jump ship, right? And jump right into anything. No. So I just want to clarify, you know, whether you're doing that on the side of your nine to five or you are full fledged um, in your entrepreneurship uh, journey. The first tip is you need to have a clear and concise mental picture of where you want what you want your business to look like. OK, so, you know, when we we're in school, it, it, you know, we talk about our, our one year plan, five year plan, 10 year plan, like have goals. Right. And it's all about where you're going. OK, don't get caught up when you start off. It, it's natural. You need the bumps. You need the failures because the only way you, you need the failures to fail forward in your business. OK, mm -hmm. but make sure that you have Repeat that for business. me, Whitney. You huh? need the failure to what? Repeat that. You need the you failures need, to do what? You need the failures to fail forward. Okay. You need to go through that. Um, but you need to also have a picture in mind. So set those goals and look at them every day. Look at them every day. Okay. It's all about where you're going. My second tip would be um, getting comfortable with leveraging all of your contacts. Okay. Don't, um, don't be afraid to advertise 
talk about your business and things like that. And don't be afraid to talk to other people about your business, okay? Whether you think they need it or not, okay? At the end of the day, at least people knowing about your business, even if that person per se doesn't need what you do, they may come across somebody in the future, right? That could benefit from that. And you want them to know enough to feel comfortable to make those referrals. There's other, you know, um, aspects of referral business, but leverage your contacts. Don't be afraid to talk about your business, get in front of people, whether or not they move forward with you. I promise you that they're going to remember you and there's going to be something down the road. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that comes your way. And then I would say the third would be, obviously we are in the financial industry. It's going to be having a sound financial game plan. Okay. The, the GPS, like, like actually what you were kind of saying earlier. So not only in, for your business, but for your personal life, what we know with a lot of people that go um, on to being entrepreneurs, opening up their own business, et cetera, is that they typically are really good at a, a, a skill set, right? Um, I have someone that I know she's, a phenomenal doctor and she decided to go more into doing her own practice type things. Okay. Super smart, great at what she does. Right. But just because we know how to use the skill to go make money, doesn't mean that we know how to prioritize that income. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you don't want all of your hard work to go to waste, right. Um, for the future. And there's so many advantages, uh, financially, uh, I'm not a tax person, but there's so many tax advantages and things like that, making sure that you have a sound financial game plan in place. So, you know, I'm sure that everybody wants to guarantee even on this platform that their financial legacy is cemented. So make sure that you get with someone and you are preferably you can talk with us, but anyone that you're comfortable and make sure that there's a game plan set in place to meet those goals that we were just talking about. Absolutely. Gems. That's why I had to have her repeat it. Failure <laughs> to fail forward. Drop the gems for us, Whitney. I appreciate those three tips. So Ira, it is now your turn. I'm going to ask you the same question. If you could share three related, excuse me, three business related tips, what would they be? So my three, uh, my business related tips is to advertise. Number one, don't be afraid. To put yourself out there, people need to know what you're doing. It could be, uh, you know, selling shoes, doing hair, open up the restaurant. People need to know what you do, even if you don't need it, like Whitney was saying. Mm -hmm. You know, so pe people could feel, you know, confident enough to send people to you. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid. Uh, social media is a great way to advertise. Um, you think you think people don't see what you posted? People see. They absolutely they do see. see whether they like <laughs> it, ask you about it, love it. They see what you're doing. And once you get that ball rolling, people, they might not come through at the beginning. They see that ball rolling. They, they're going to start asking questions. And, you know, and it's crazy because strangers be your biggest supporters. It's insane. It might not be, you know, family strangers. They be the biggest ones to send people to you because they, you know, they see the value. They those friends the family where you were at and they sometimes can't picture you where you're at now you know mm -hmm. but those, those fresh faces that you run into from advertising they can become your biggest support and so that's number one mm -hmm. and then number two uh stay self-motivated and if you're an entrepreneur mm -hmm. you got to have that self-motivation you know put you have to push your own self you don't have someone a boss uh you know be hush you don't have that boss behind you, um, <laughs> micromanaging, you know, you set your own schedule. And sometimes, you know, you, you work more sometimes than a nine to five. Um, Listen, when it comes to staying self-motivated, uh, you got to make those mm -hmm. phone calls. You got to contact mm -hmm. people. You know, sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes you don't want to pick up that phone to to call clients, to call, you know, make the return phone calls. But you have to st stay self-motivated to do that yes. um, and connect with people, you know, growing the team. I'm sorry, my kids are yelling right now. And, and never, then consistent. I like, apologize for that. Okay. And then staying consistent on top of all of that, 
you have to stay consistent when, when it comes to being an entrepreneur um, because that's how your business is going to grow. Um, yeah. And then number three, uh, doing a great job serving the consumer. So if you have those those clients that see value in what you do, you want them to, like I said, feel comfortable and confident enough to refer others to you. So th those are my three uh, advertising self, being self-motivated and, and doing a good job serving, serving your clients. Yeah. So if I could, something that both of these ladies touched on is adding value to people's lives. Everything is not about making money. Now, don't get me mm -hmm. wrong. <laughs> we want, we want, we want the check. We, we want to make us some monies because we're preparing for our financial future too. Yeah. But I have seen the greatest return in my business by adding value to people's lives, whether it is sharing, cause y'all know I'm a hairstylist, sharing hair tips, mm -hmm. doing easy tutorials for people to be able to do at home styling. It creates a connection. It creates trust with the people who may not need me today, but they may need me tomorrow, or they may know someone who, well, I don't get my hair done with her, but I seen this girl on TikTok and she's an old school stylist, baby. Of course you get your hair shampooed when you come to the salon. Those type of things added value to my potential consumer. So what they said is a thousand percent true. Do not be afraid to tell people about your business. And even if just sharing some information gives them a little gem that they think about, they may not, they may not come to you, but when someone is having a conversation with them about needing financial guidance, well, I met this lady named Whitney. I met this lady named Ira. Now I, I, I never work with her, but I really like her personality. She helped me with it. That's very true. So those are all incredible gems. Thank you so much, ladies, for answering those questions. Um, now we're going to play a Would You Rather. But before I do, I want to point out, here is Whitney's website for them to book with you. Or is this is Calendarly. What, what is this? Tell the people yeah. what this link is for, so, for you. Um, I don't know. It, it, Calendly is just a, a scheduling app. Okay. So okay. Um, every person's going to be different. Okay. So we definitely want to be able to sit down with you, go over the you know entirety of who we are and what we do and see if we're able to bring you value. Okay. So if you, if you want to sit down, you want to have a conversation, feel free. You can look at that schedule um, and that will put uh, you on our schedule and I and I will show up to go over those things with you. There is no that is complimentary. We don't charge. We we don't charge to sit with you. And unlike many other places, we don't charge to put together um, a game plan for you too. Okay. Mm -hmm. So at least if you want to get eyes on that, we'll put that game plan in place for you. See what it looks like. And then obviously, if you see value in it and you want to move forward, then we can talk those next steps. Okay. And um, so that's our first thing is that's what that scheduling link is for. Okay. Awesome. Cause I want to make sure that I plug all of your contact information. So when they book here, mm -hmm. they'll be able to connect with you and Ira Whitney. Is that correct? Is that what I'm understanding? Yes. Yes. And I would, it, I would prefer there is an area that you can add some, you know, comments or whatnot. Uh, just specify that you, you learned about us through Ashley. Okay. Through, through her platform and stuff. All right. I'm plugged. So, no, I'm joking. I'm, yeah. She's the plug. Right. And, um, and then we can, that will help us to kind of filter out, um, where you're coming from and things like that. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And before we get into the, would you rather, I want you guys to make sure that you follow Whitney on IG under the Whitney pronounce your last name for me. It, it's French. I'm Haitian. So it's Moise. Moise. Yeah. Moise. Oh. Follow yeah. Whitney Moise <laughs> at IG on the, excuse me, the Whitney Moise. That's her IG. And Ira's IG is, I'll make sure y'all follow Ira at I, um, Ira underscore Watson three. Now, Whitney, you got a TikTok. I do have TikTok. I need, oh, okay. I need to be a little bit more present on there. Um, okay. I'm, just, I'm, I'm more the TikTok the person. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Because I didn't want to plug one and not plug the other. Okay. okay. So Whitney is going to work on being more present on her TikTok. So yeah, we're not going to plug her TikTok quite yet. But 
Um, Ira's TikTok is iCali33. So you make sure that you follow these ladies. Make sure that you reach out, book a free consultation. These ladies are giving you gems and information. There's no high pressure. They're going to give you the game plan. You decide what's best for you. If it works, great. If it doesn't, great. Tell somebody else because maybe it'll work for them yes, too. Yeah. Yeah. The, these are the type of people that you need to keep in connection with because when it's right for you, it's right. And they're only here to help. Absolutely. Now, do we want to make a little money on the side? Yes. I want to make a little money on the side, but <laughs> the biggest thing is seeing an improvement in our community. Do y'all share that with me ladies? A thousand percent. I have to agree. A thousand. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So now we're done being so serious. Um, <laughs> I have two bonus would you rather questions that I would like to ask. Who wants to go first? Who wants the first question? Uh, I, I'll go first. I've been yeah. one second this okay. whole time. I'll, I'll take initiative okay. and go first. <laughs> gotcha. So the, the would you rather, sorry. So Ira's would you rather question is, Ira, would you rather travel into space and visit other planets and all of the things that could be inhabiting those other planets, <laughs> or would you rather travel to the past? Oh, I'm going to the past. I got some questions, and I want to see some people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's up there, but it can stay up there <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. But I would love to go back to the past and relive, relive some things. Um, mm -hmm. absolutely. Go see some people. Okay. Have some conversations. Gotcha. So Ira's going to the past. She said, what is outside of our hemisphere can stay up there. That ain't none of our business. <laughs> okay. Now, Whitney, your question is, hold on. I'm uh, listen. I'm, I'm looking past. I got all of this stuff on here. Which one do I want to do for you? Uh -huh. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, let me make sure. Okay, here's your question, Whitney. Okay. Would you rather spend the majority of your time by yourself or the majority of your time with other people? Ooh, as a mom of four kids, like, I ain't gonna lie. I like, <laughs> so you might find me in the closet sometimes. Right. Live, right? Right. You on my phone, right? Um, no, but I think, I think everyone needs time to themselves, but I, I love being around people. I love being around mm -hmm. folks. I, I, I definitely am an extrovert. Um, so I, I, and I like being able to have the opportunity to make people feel good. That makes me feel good. So yeah. I'll get my time to myself, but if I had to choose, I'm, I'm gonna go with more people. Okay. I'm here for that. <laughs> she said, I, you might find me in the closet. Listen, right. don't open that pantry door. Ain't nobody in here. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Well, Whitney and Ira, I thank you so much for answering my questions, playing our Would You Rather game. I'm going to give you ladies a few minutes. If you have anything else that you want to share, plug. If you have anything else you want the people to know that I may not have asked or we may have missed, by all means, take y'all's time and share with the people while we have you here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Whitney, real quick, I just want to... Uh... I just want to thank you again, Ashley, for having us here. I really appreciate the opportunity and, and going for it with our, with our panel today. You are more than welcome. I appreciate you guys showing up. I really do. So yeah. the feeling is mutual. Yeah. And hanging out with our co-panelists that keeps the right here too. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, we appreciate the platform. I love what you're doing. Um, thank you. Guys, more people need like more, like you, okay? The intention to uh, go out, provide information, whether or not there is, you know, uh, something reciprocated on your end, you know? I, like we said, we're still okay with making money, but, you know, right. gratitude, being grateful for just having the opportunity to share things um, is a, a characteristic that we don't see in a lot of people. Um, and that's an aspect that we love about what we do here. So um, like we said before, um, if anyone is looking to find out some more information, gain some more financial knowledge, okay, 
Uh, we are about, you know, many places can be about financial literacy, um, but no one has the resources that we do to back it up. 110% confident in that. Okay. So um, most important is education will never steer you wrong as far as answering your questions. And we truly do what's right for you 100% of the time. No pressure. Our job isn't to sell these things like insurance or investments or any of the things that Iris spoke. Our job is to bring value to you and help you save some more money. So um, in really ideally, uh, I'm here about impacting the generations, baby. OK, mm -hmm. I'm looking for legacies mm -hmm. to be built. I'm looking for people to, you know, like change the trajectory of our community. And yeah. if that's something that you want to be involved with, absolutely reach out um, Instagram. And I know TikTok, you guys can uh, direct message us on there too, right? If you have some questions um, and then we can, you know, definitely set up some time to hop on Zoom and go over that information or you can absolutely go straight to our scheduling link. We'd love to meet with you and we're excited to help you and your family. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, ma'am. Did you have anything else to add, Ira? I don't want to cut you off. I appreciate you giving me my flowers, but do you have anything no else you want to plug? Uh, no problem. No, uh, Whitney said it all. You know, questions, anything. You you know anyone with questions. Just direct them this way. It's totally free. We love helping families. We love educating and giving guidance. That's what we're here for. Awesome. Well, Whitney, I appreciate you. Ira, I appreciate you. Co-panelists, we appreciate you. And y'all are the cutest <laughs> back here. Um, this is what it's about. We are here to encourage, inspire, educate, inform. Each one, teach one. Woman to woman, we are not Barbara and you ain't sure that we not here <laughs> to come <laughs> with any negativity. We are here to empower and just be the change that we want to see. So I want everybody to make sure, last plug, go follow Ira on Instagram. She is Ira underscore Watson three on TikTok. She is iCali33. Make sure that y'all follow Whitney, the Whitney. Mo I'm going to say it wrong. <laughs> Okay. Wait. On the screen. <laughs> Follow what I got typed in on the screen because I want to put some respect on her name. Um, and here is the booking site where you guys can book a consultation with them, 100% complimentary. And then you do with what you will with the information and the value that they add to your life. I want to thank you, ladies, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. I hope everybody has a wonderful, productive Monday. Don't forget that they these ladies are here. We are here. Not everything on social media is negative. There are legit people on here that are using social media to spread a positive message because we want to be the change we want to see. And with that being said, we'll end our third episode. I got one more episode after this, guys. I am, I am really considering making this a regular thing. Maybe not every Monday, but maybe once a month, because I think this is so powerful. I think I have to keep it going. Yeah, I really I agree. I agree. So I'm, I'm putting I'm putting some thought and some prayer behind that. But ladies, y'all have a wonderful day. I'll let y'all get back to y'all's family. Thank you, Ashley. And, and you're welcome. You, I'm going to try my best to get this episode up as soon as possible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> y'all have a good day. All right. You too. All right. All bye. Right. All right, guys, I am going to wrap up Monday, Mondays, money, Mondays. There we go. I'm going to wrap up money, Mondays. But before I do, I want y'all to hear me and hear me clearly. I am streaming live on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And I am telling y'all right now that there is something weird going on, <clears throat> excuse me, going on with the algorithm. Like I, I know I have gotten way more reach um, than this before. So I'm asking for your help that when you see my content, share my content, content, like my content. If you're not already following on um, 
YouTube. Sorry, if you're not already following on YouTube, please make sure that you follow or subscribe on YouTube and make sure that you enjoy the content that I've already put up. I'm trying to upload videos at least once a week and then I stream at least twice a week so that we can continue to build the platform and build the community, okay? So happy Money Monday, y'all. Y'all go and do something productive. We are on spring break this week here in my county, so we are gonna go find something fun to do. But I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see y'all tomorrow for Tell Em Tuesday. All right, guys, bye.